I want to welcome everybody to the first in history, I think, uh, totally remote Zoom meeting for a Beach Haven Council. It is Thursday, March 26th. It's four o'clock. Um, so I have everyone except the council muted right now. Um, I hope that you can utilize your function to raise your hand. Um, if you look under participants you are, or more, you have the ability to raise your hand. Um, when the public comment comes time, you can raise your hand and then I will call on you and unmute mm -hmm. you to participate in the public comment. I think that's how it's going to work. But um, this is my first time. I know it's most of our first time using this, so I apologize. It might be a bit of a team effort. Um, can everybody hear me okay? Yep. Yeah, I see you nodding. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So I just wanted to take a few minutes right now to thank our emergency management office. They're on the line right now and our police department. They have been working tirelessly these past few weeks, sitting in meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting, putting in a lot of hours. Um, so I just wanted to thank them for all that time and effort and it's, and it's not over yet. Um, so I wanted to thank them and they asked me to put out a statement. Um, the statement right now is the Office of Emergency Management is responding to the emergency and following the guidelines enacted by Governor Murphy. Working closely with our police department and municipal department heads in order to keep our personnel safe during this pandemic. We are in constant contact with emergency management coordinators island-wide in order to have a unified response as situations may change. While we cannot stop taxpayers from coming to their island properties, we expect them to follow all of our current rules and regulations that have been put in place by state, county, and local officials. Please monitor our Facebook page it, it is updated with important information as conditions change. So thank you, Bill and Beverly, for that statement. All right. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, Beverly. Nancy, can you hear us? I can hear you fine, and Tom is on speakerphone on my phone, so he's listening in. Um, don't All you right. need to do a roll call? I want you to lead the flag salute, please. Who, me? Yeah. Can you show me a flag? Okay, go for it. That's all right. Don't worry about it. Uh, I have one outside I can look at. Um, I pledge allegiance to the, flag, to the flag of the United States of America, States of America and to the Republic, Republic. And to the Republic for which, which it stands, one nation, one nation, one nation under God, God. Indivisible, 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 liberty, liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. For all. <laughs> well, that was interesting. That was confusing. Well, there's a little <laughs> lag between people, so I think, you know, that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Pursuant to the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Act, adequate notice of this Zoom meeting has been provided by posting on the bulletin board in the Beach Haven Municipal Building and mailing the same to the Beach Haven Times, the Asbury Park Press, and the Press of Atlantic City. Mr. Allen. Here. Mrs. Baumiller. Here. Mr. Lynch. Here. Mr. Maskell, absent. M Mayor Davis. Here. Okay. The agenda that I posted um, had the resolutions listed separately. At this time, I'd like to consider them as a consent agenda. All matters listed under item consent agenda are considered to be routine by the Municipal Council. Any item requiring expenditure is supported by a certification of funds and any item requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda and discussed separately. All consent agenda items will be reflected in full in the minutes. The resolutions that we're considering today are Resolution 84, returning park bond. Resolution 85 is returning bond fire application fee. 86, executing a shared agreement with Long Beach Township for transportation system. And this particular resolution is just for the existing transportation system. The shuttle buses that run 
on Bay Avenue, nothing more. 87 is approving our emergency operations plan. 88, authorizing the cancellation of taxes due to the five-year abatement. Now this resolution we've seen before, this is the abatement for the properties at 500 North Bay. There was some discrepancy in the dates in which the resolution was approved. So I would like to reapprove the resolution as of today with the effective date of January 1, 2020. 89's authorizing execution of a shared service agreement with the Ocean County Prosecutor's Office for the FAST program. 90 is appointing a tax and assessment search officer. And 93 is approving membership to the New Jersey Firemen's Association. Do any members of council have any questions on those? No, I don't. I'm sorry, I'm working on three different devices here. Tom says he doesn't. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve the resolutions within the consent agenda as presented? Motion to approve. Okay, Tom also. Thanks, Dan. Tom Lynch, thank you. Mr. Allen. Yes. Mrs. Baumiller. Yes. Mr. Lynch. Yes. Mayor Davis. Yes. Okay. So we'll move on to general discussion. I have a quick um, discussion on here about the trolley program status. Um, I've spoken with a couple members of council and CFO Shari Bowler about the trolley initiative. I understand that the ordinance for the funding is already in place and I'm not suggesting that we rescind the ordinance, but I am suggesting that we consider kicking off the program until next summer. I feel that we have a lot of unknowns far as how we're going to be collecting the donations. Um, I have questions about the formation of a nonprofit. I have questions about um, whether these businesses are going to be in a financial state to be making donations. I know Shari has some concerns about purchasing requirements and timing. And frankly, I just feel like it's too close to summer. I'd prefer to take some time and do it right and look for a launch date of next summer. Jamie, would you like to go first? Um, I also uh, agree with everything that you're saying right now. And I just um, feel that right now, um, the borough is experiencing a, a different type of problem that we're facing and that that should be their first priority. And even though that many residents and business owners were very excited about the trolley, I think that we have to deal with the situation at hand first and then move the uh, trolleys till uh, next summer. So I agree with everything that you said. Okay. Dan? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree too with that many questions outside of the scope of what's happening in the world right now, I think it's a good idea to, you know, to wait. You know, I think it's important to, uh, distinction to make that we're not stopping it. We're just going to move it back a year. It's not, you know, we still like to see how it plays out. I still think it's got a lot of merit and I'd like to see how it, how it goes. But right now, how can we advocate for putting 20 plus people on, uh, on, on a trolley when we're on the other hand saying let's social distance and be responsible. We don't know if it's going to be done this summer. We, you know, there's too many unknowns. So we have to, I think it's smart to wait. I think it's a good idea not to stop it, but just say, you know, hit the pause button for a little while. Nancy. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I tend to disagree. Um, I, I'm an epidemiologist and I've studied this kind of stuff for years. I, I mean, this obviously is a very important uh, situation we're in. I do think um, we'll be okay during the summer uh, because most of these viruses, uh, they, they tend to kind of decrease 
uh, in, in April, and, but they will come back in the fall. And what we need to do is we, the government needs to be able to provide care areas for people. We don't have enough ventilators, we can't keep people alive. But on the other hand, if we don't go out into the public, we will develop no herd immunity. The, the, the reason this is such a bad situation is there's no herd immunity. Um, we can't keep people cooped up all the time. Now, on the other hand, I am concerned about a couple of things. I'm concerned about the, um, the mechanism by which we're funding the trolley, which is through this new, um, instead of we're not going with the um, LBI chamber, uh, we're developing a, a new vehicle in order to administer these funds. Uh, the idea is that any revenues that would be garnered from, from this endeavor uh, would, if it were with the LBI, would go to LBI chamber and not to be chaven. This way we get to keep any revenues to improve our town. Um, I, I, I think there is some concern here because that's not in place at the moment. And I would like to hear mm -hmm. what the committee has to say about that. That's a concern. Um, I, I'm not as concerned about uh, the idea of people putting people on the trolley. You're going to have these shuttle buses running. I mean, either either we're going to be shut down all summer and have no interaction, and our economy is going to go totally south, and it's going to be absolutely dreadful. Or we're going to have a summer, and and I I. I tend to opt for a summer. Although, I mean, I understand everybody's concerns and, um, but I would like to know more specifically exactly how the committee is um, working on uh, this vehicle for um, collecting the funds and buying the trolleys so that we're doing everything legally. Uh, we, we have to have that mechanism in place and that's a concern. So I'd like to hear more about that before we come to a final decision on this. Okay, before we go on, I hear some background noise. I don't know where that's coming from, but if you have background noise, just mute mute for now. Um, Nancy, does Ch uh, does Tom have anything to say right now mm -hmm. about this? Yeah, it. Tom, do you have anything to say about the trolley issue? Yeah, I'm agreeing with Nancy. The fact is, I think we've got to start to move forward. If we get it, we're, if we dictate that we can't do this by the government, I understand that. But I think by waiting in of the year, I think we need some things to be done because I think we're going to have a beach this year. I think there'll be a lot of people coming down. Uh, I am concerned about the, the mechanism, as, as Nancy is, about the funding. I'd like to hear more about that because I'm not so sure that the Beach Haven Chamber is the, the right tool, in my opinion. Uh, I thought that uh, the, the other one was, was a better fit, but maybe it's not. I'll have to hear more about it. But I think we should move on and do it. And the sooner we order this thing, the sooner we get it. I think it could be up and running. Now, I'm not saying that we can use it. So yeah, I'm hoping just muted things don't get more popular. Right. Get any use? And I think it's uh, time we move forward in a positive expert rather than move and stay back. So uh, my opinion, I'll stay with Nancy and her opinion. I, another issue I'd like, uh, you know, another statement I would like to make is right now, in, interest rates are, what, what, what happened? I just lost the yep. uh, audio on this thing. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, it came back. So I mean, we right now interest <coughs> rates are almost non-existent. Chuck just joined. What? Chuck just joined the meeting as well. Right, Chuck did. Yes. Okay. Okay. So anyway, you got my point. So, uh, um, I mean, that's another thing I think we should think about right now. The interest rates are practically zilch. Um, so uh, I I just don't you know, think. My, we can, my concerns, my concerns don't really have much to do with, my concerns don't have a whole lot to do with this whole um, coronavirus epidemic. I feel like that was just the straw that broke the camel's back for me. Um, I feel like there's a lot of background work that needs to be done that is going to take time and we don't have it. It's almost April. So that, that's my concerns. I would like Shari Bowler to address this a little bit as well. I would um, also hear from the committee if possible. Okay. I wanna go through the borough officials first. Absolutely. Um, my concerns really are not so much the financial impact of the trolley and interest rates and where we are today because we've already appropriated the funds 
My concerns really are with the mechanism on how we're going to be collecting the donations. I feel that we don't really have a, a strong path quite yet to make sure we collect those funds legally for us and to protect us. Um, and, and now that time is ticking away, I mean, I, I do have the quote and the paperwork for the National Co-op. Um, just got that this week from them, and that has to be forwarded on to the National Co-op, which has been done, but they have to, I need to wait for their approval. There's still a couple steps that have to be, um, we have to follow the process. And, you know, I know back in the beginning, we were talking about needing to have this on on order by January or as soon as possible after that. And here we are, April is next week. And with everybody shut down, I think it's gonna take a little bit longer administratively, not necessarily from our <laughs> end, but from all of the vendors that we're working with. And I know they have they say our chassis is um, complete, but production is halted at the moment. So things are gonna be delayed. And if, you know, if we're delayed two weeks from this July 1st deadline, then we're looking at a delivery in mid-July and in mid-July all of you know everybody is in the heart of the season at that point and you know our committee members and us at the borough everybody is knee deep in the middle of their season and I think people aren't going to have a lot of time to dedicate to you know once we get it um, outfit it with all of the advertising make sure the the video the CD monitor is working properly and work out some of the logistics before we actually put it in motion and, and put it on the road. And I'd rather not see it out on the road to launch this, you know, this great program that we're trying to promote. And I'd rather not see it launched, you know, at the end of July in a rushed manner to then function for a month and then have the trolley sit for another year before and deteriorate before we put it in motion again. I mean, I would like to see the process administratively with the nonprofit, get all of that worked out first, make sure we're doing what we're doing in a proper legal format, and then get it running and have it ready to go, um, you know, for next season, for next May, when we're Sherry, not- Sherry, can I ask, may I ask you a question? What, I don't, I guess I don't know what the national co-op is. Um, it's called HGAC, it's Houston Galveston, um, in order for us to purchase something of this size, we would either have to go to a, a private bidding process or buy through a state contract. They don't offer this on a state contract, so it's a national co-op, which we are really frowned upon in the state of New Jersey for even purchasing through a national co-op. And in order to do so, they, they do make the process quite lengthy and cumbersome because they try to deter you away from using these. But there are some things that, you know, in this case that, you know, we can use it. It's just we have to go through a few more steps in order to use it. And we need approval from the co-op itself in order to move forward with the purchase. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So right now we're, we're kind of split with the council about whether we're going to move forward or not. I'd like to hear from Chuck at this point about your feeling on trying to continue to kick this trolley initiative off for this summer or trying to shoot for a, a kickoff for next summer with this. And Sherry, also, I'm sorry, one more last comment that I forgot to mention is I know we, we have seen a tentative list of some of the businesses that have verbally committed. But I, I have a, a feeling that at some point, maybe some of these businesses may have reservation now because of the situation that we're in and some are forced to shut down and are worried that they're gonna lose revenue for the season. So I just feel like we're putting ourselves more at risk than we were you know, a month ago with the whole program. Mm -hmm. That's all. Thanks. Yep. All right. Well, I, I think I think we need. To, Chuck, do you have anything to say, or should we hear from the committee? No, I think that we need to throw this back to you know, Cramer and their committee. Uh, you know, they're the ones who are 
putting all the time and effort and have gone out and faced these merchants to try and get the the funding for the rap or whatever they're going to call it uh, and i don't know is that i don't know if there is a way that we can get a more etched in granite uh, commitment from these you know from these businesses and i agree with shari that you know people are are you know questioning what is going to happen are they uh you know are we going to uh, all the businesses in beach haven going to be shut down at 8 p.m listen i i don't think we c i think it's impossible for us to get a concrete commitment because the mechanism to bring in these donations the 501 c3 that is supposed to be accepting these donations is yet to be formed I mean, that's a big hurdle. I think that's the biggest hurdle right now. How long does it take to form one of those? I don't know. I, I, have, for, I have formed one, Dan, and it, I never found it, you know, that that difficult. But I, I, I don't know. It sounds like with this national co-op thing uh, and I've never formed one inside a municipal government, mm -hmm. which obviously we wouldn't. We wouldn't be. It's outside of us. That's that's the point. How do we structure it so that we can uh, benefit from any revenue then? But if it's a nonprofit, so legal for them to just form something to just be a trust and just do it. But we need to be a bigger picture in the service that they're providing. I mean, it's. So, um, yeah, Mr. Mr. Harvey is saying that, you know, sometimes that can take time, especially with the uh, pandemic going on, you could have further delays in forming a 501c3 and getting an agreement in place between the borough and the nonprofit to accept these donations. So even if the businesses are ready to write a check today, the mechanism is not in place to bring in that money and then, you know, hand it to the borough. That's just not in place. I mean, I'm, I'm getting information that it's everything has taken more than 60 days now to get done. I mean, DMV is closed, everything's done. So 60 days from now, and the mechanism won't even be built by the end of June. So, I mean, I have to agree with Shari on this. Let's get it right out of the gate. I think it's important for the success of this program that we get it right from the implement rather than mess it up out of the gate and lose support in the community. Yep, I agree. So I think it, it so might. So I have four yeah. members of the. I have four members of the committee on the line right now. I don't know which of you would like to speak. Um, do we want to hear from? Uh, let's just try Bonnie. Is the hand Give thing me just working? a second here, guys? Hold on a second. Let me see. I apologize, I'm new at this. All right, Bonnie Wells. Bonnie Wells, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes I'd I like can you hear you fine. Bit. Can't see you, but I can hear you. <laughs> That's Bonnie, fine. I'd like you to speak to this, please, if you can. Um, actually, I've had a conversation with you as well as, um, you know, uh, emails back and forth through with the committee. I feel like um, Jay is good as far as speaking into having the money in place. Um, and I know that they were already talking about getting the 5013C3, uh, you know, getting that together. Um, you know, and again, that not being a huge obstacle. The biggest question is, and I truly think we will be up and running this summer as a, as a beach resort. And I feel like Nancy's uh, probably very close to having the accurate information as far as it will probably, the virus will probably be back in the fall, you know, which is frustrating. So it's almost like um, economically as a beach resort, we will probably have our burst, but then we're going to have an issue with our, you know, off seasons, our shoulder seasons. So going back into the whole trolley piece, I'm so excited about it, but really with everything going on and the social distancing, they are issues that you don't know 
how many people are going to be tainted with the way that they're going to think twice about getting on a trolley this, this summer, just because of, you know, what has gone on and how they really are concerned when people are saying, you know, it can be on surfaces, you know, the cruise ship, it was, they were picking it up 17 days later. So as opposed to this, you know, you know, something's in the air for three hours, it's on, you know, it can be on a metal surface, a plastic surface or whatever it is, that's going to stay with people this summer and that could be an issue as far as wanting to, you know. Good point. I know that, I know that Jay and the other, and some of the other members of the committee have said, you know, they really want to be able to uh, <clears throat> rent out the trolley to like the wedding uh, market. And that market certainly, you know, may not be too firm uh, if they have all this, you know, the social distancing and you're trying to jam a lot of people mm -hmm. into a, a trolley car. Mm -hmm. So. <clears throat> okay. Bonnie, do you well, have who, anything who else is, to add before I go to the next committee? No, no. I feel like it's, it's more for me. I look at it. It's like a, it's like the beach haven billboard, you know, ridden or not, it's exciting, but you know, the, the entire concept is not that, do you know what I mean? So. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, who is in charge? Yeah, I'm going to turn off your 50, microphone. 501. 501C3. That's Who's not in charge of that? yet. It hasn't been. It has not, not been formed yet. We don't know yet. Oh, okay. Well. All right. I'm going to go now to Brian Wainwright. I'm going to unmute him. You able to hear me okay? <laughs> yep. Yep. Brian, can you hear us? I think Brian Wainwright. Muted. It looks like Brian's muted. Uh, there you go. Let me work. Yeah, we good. Just, I just hear. I can hear him. There you okay. go. Great. So I just confirmed with with our outside accountants that there, there are no delays currently in 501 um, formations that they formed. Uh, two in the last 24 hours. They've sent it out. It comes right back. So there's no issue there. The LBI Chamber of Commerce, all of the board members remain willing and able to support the, the, um, the trolley program if need be. If for some reason this new organization is not the direction that we chose to choose to go, we can certainly still go the LBI Chamber of Commerce route to, to process those um, donations and get them to the town. But we, we had decided on this route so that we felt like we had more control and more opportunity to do more inside the borough at a future date, whether there were other projects or things that we wanted to continue to do on an ongoing basis that would require that. So uh, that is really just a matter of, of filling out the paperwork, establishing who the board members are, president, treasury, uh, treasurer, secretary, and, and getting that done. I and mean, it could be completed by Monday at the latest. I have a question. Um, yes. If, if um, Brian, if we went with the LBI chamber for this year and decided to form our own uh, organization um, that would sim be similar to what they have, uh, would, would, do we have to make a commitment, a long-term commitment with the LBI chamber? Would they, would they serve that purpose for a year? <laughs> The, the chamber is really flexible. We were entering an agreement with them regardless to help manage and, and, and farm out the screen advertising in exchange for the use of the app so that we made sure that the shuttle, um, the trolley would be on the sh same app as the shuttles are. Uh -huh. uh, so we could modify that. It's, it's, it's not a big deal. And, and really the formation of this new group was, you know, the, the idea of the, the members of the committee to say, look, this isn't going to be the only thing that we want to get, on. <coughs> and, you know, and if we're going to, you know, bring the business community together for the better of the borough, you know, we ought to have the flexibility to do that outside of the chamber long term. It, it was really just not about the trolley specifically and, and you know, and, and who the, the members are is sort of TBD, but presumably it would be most of the folks that have been on the committee if they wanted um, to continue to donate their time. Did that answer your question, Nancy? Yeah. Brian, do you have any other thoughts or concerns about moving forward or not? 
Look, I mean, I, I, I love the idea of the trolley. You know, we're in uncertain times. I, I think that Jay has done a tremendous job because he knows so many of the other businesses um, more so than, you know, somebody like me that's sort of new. Um, he feels really confident about the, the money still being there and particularly with the ability to, you know, write checks either in June or, or August. But, you know, we don't know what the future holds. You know, we could be talking about this like it was just this one time event for a short period of time or it could be extended. So we don't know. I, I'd love to see it go forward this year. I think there's a lot to be gained in the lessons that we would learn, but, but I also am, you know, risk adverse. So I, I you know, I understand the concerns at the same time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Brian, I'm going to put you back on mute and I'm going to go to the next committee member. Okay. Sure. Chick, this is Chick V. Can you hear me, Chick? Yes. Do you hear me? Yes. 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 I can. Hello, everybody. What would you like to add? Um, I see both sides. Um, I think if we go forward for this year and we try to pull this off, I still don't think there's a guarantee that we're going to see it by the 1st of July. Um, mm -hmm. There's a chance of that. Um, I think we could make it work, but there is definitely hesitancy um, from uh, a couple I've spoken to uh, of the supporters and donors um, at different levels that, you know, we really don't know what to make of the summer season. I mean, we're all hopeful, of course, but um, I definitely – think there's a little apprehension as to, you know, where we're going to be come June, July, or, you know, hopefully, hopefully July and August can be strong. But mm -hmm. I understand that, you know, there's hesitancy. Um, it would be nice to get it um, and try to work out some of the kinks. Um, we've done a lot of work to get to this point. Um, but I, again, I, I see both sides that, you know, the, the apprehension about the summer season and, you know, rushing this thing to get it here for, you know, half of the summer or half of the season. So mm -hmm. that's really, you know, I, I, okay. I could go either way. Okay. Do we have any questions for Chick? Before I move on, yeah, Chick, I have a question. Tom Lynch. Chick, Sorry, Tom. thanks, Chick. About Go ahead, the Tom. You know, these trolleys. If we were to, let's just say hypothetically, I did not hear that. Take care, you hear Tom? He's trying to talk. Chick, my question is the people manufacturing these trolleys, are they going to guarantee us a date if we give them an okay? Or are they going to say, we can't do anything until we get approval from the government to go back to work? Well, I, I know that Don has been in contact with them, and they're still stating, I mean, they're out of work presently. Um, but they are still saying that they could have it for us by July the 1st. I mean, they that's... Could. You know, I mean, that's as of... I believe yesterday, but again, we don't know what the next week or two or three are going to bring. So that, that could change to be honest. Um, but as of yesterday, I believe, and Don would be, you know, Don's in more contact with them or more direct contact with them. But I think they're still saying that July 1st is our target date. Well, check the reason I asked that question was, I remember Don 
mm-hmm. saying that we had to get something approved by January or February, maybe at the latest, to get this thing for the summer. Now we're into March and April next week. Uh, that may be pushing us mm-hmm. back pretty far. Right. I mean, we're on their schedule, um, but as you all know, you know, nothing official has taken place yet. But they have uh, two of the chassis, and they're, you know, we're in line to have it, although their factory manufacturer is shut down for the next, I believe, two weeks. But they're still, in an email yesterday, they stated that we could still see it on July the 1st. Check another okay. question. All right. Is, it, is there a liability here that we would have if we have to say no now that we have to buy it? I mean, we've given them an okay verbally, <laughs> but is there any liabilities that we have that says, oh, you must buy it by a certain drop dead date? Um, I mean, Don would be able to answer that better. And Don is on the call. If I put him on in a minute. Okay. Check you okay with me putting, putting Don on instead? Sure. I just wanted to say that, I mean, nothing official has exchanged hands yet. So to answer Tom, but Don would know better than I. All right, let me see here. Yeah, got it. It's in the hands of HJC. Okay. 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 Don, can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, go right ahead. Yes. Okay, let's be real about this. Uh, the likelihood of getting a trolley by July 1st is unrealistic, okay? Uh, So let's throw that away. I mean, they're telling us that if they start production on April 6th, they would have to work overtime to get us a trolley by July 1st. They're also saying that all non-essential places of business must stay closed till April 24th. So that's, you know, two weeks after that. So, the likelihood of getting a trolley for July, maybe you get it in August, uh, is about the earliest in my mind. Uh, the question that's going through the back of my mind, though, is uh, would there be any benefit in having the trolley this fall, uh, you know, for Chowderfest or for something like that? And I would like to take the opportunity this fall to utilize the trolley. The, the, uh, the trolley in the fall for, for Thanksgiving, the Christmas festivals, you know, for Kapler's events, uh, for weddings and things like that. So in my mind, I think there is some benefit. The unknown is what Nancy talked about, and that is, is the virus going to come back to us in the fall? Not gonna be. Uh, but I personally I would like to see us Who's talking? Okay. Personally, I'd like to see the moving ahead with the purchase, but not not putting not doing it immediately. Getting all the bugs worked out of it. Okay, Sherry. Uh, so we can go ahead with the purchase at the appropriate time. Let's take a little bit more time. It's going to be a three or four month lead time on this. Okay. Uh, so. I would like to see us get the trolley sometime in September, very honestly, and use it for the fall, work out all the bugs, get the commitments from the businesses before they leave for the winter. You know, the, most of the businesses are here in September and October. If you if you you postpone it until sometime in next spring, the businesses don't come back until April and May. And I, I think you, we should really target for the trolley being delivered sometime in September as opposed to July 1st. Give the manufacturer the opportunity. It takes some additional time to see what happens. Uh, it's a four-month lead time. If you looked at September the 15th uh, for the trolley and you go back four months, you're talking August, July, June, June 15th, because the July 15th, August 15th, September 15th, 
I think you could postpone the order and have all the details worked out until June 15th. Let's see where we are. I don't think we want to per do the purchase order today, but I think you want to think about re-initiating it on or about June 1st or June 15th. Let's revisit it at that point in time. Let's see what happens. Uh, and with the thought process that if we get it on June 15th, we still have the opportunity to meet. If we put the order on June 15th, we, we have more information as to what's going to happen with the summer. We have more information as, you know, we could still deal with the businesses in September at the end. <coughs> Because uh, in the past, we've been always been talking about having the businesses make their commitment upon delivery of the trolley, which was about June 1st to July 1st. So, you know, let's revisit it with the businesses on or about June 1st to June 15th. And at that point in time, put the order in for the trolley. Depending upon what the feedback is, that, that let's, we, need, we need some time, okay? And in addition to that, I think Brian... I agree. Okay. I think in terms of Brian, I think the way to go is with the 5013C. I think the 5013C will give the big, biggest benefit for the town. And as Brian mentioned, the there's good, towns and businesses are going to need a lot of help. I mean, in the email I think I sent out to everybody, I think we need to start thinking about recovery and the things that we're going to need to move. Some of the things that happen maybe on Memorial Day weekend and early in the summer, we're probably going to want to move to the fall. Uh, I think the, the uh, Friends of Beach Haven, which I think Brian mentioned may be the name of it, is the way to go. They'll give us the most money, and, uh, and I think we had a discussion with Sherry Bowler about this, but in the long term would benefit the community the most. We're going with the Friends of Beach Haven and other activities. So my position on this right now, let's work through all the details of the purchase, Let's not issue a purchase order. Let's get back to them and say, listen, on or about June 1st, we're going to revisit it and hopefully have the trolley on about September the 15th. Let's see if that schedule works for them. Uh, I don't like the idea of getting a piece of equipment that's manufactured on overtime. Uh, quality of the vehicle might get, you know, be jeopardized. Uh, I think we got to put a hold on it right now look for the businesses to make their commitments on or about September 1st or September 15th when they leave, put a purchase in order in about, if everything looks better on June 1st, revisit that June 1st. I don't think we want to wait Don, next summer. Go ahead. Don, I appreciate that you're throwing out some dates and that you're willing to um, give us some time, but I, I think what it's going to do now is allow us to continue to meet with our legal team and the committee and to continue just to have conversations and to work these things out. We, we still have a lot of things that need to be worked out. So I feel better that we're allowing us to have that time. I mean, Shari and I were like, you know, a boiling pot. We, we're out of time and the pressure's on. So I, I don't want to commit to any dates. I just want to say that we'll continue to meet, we'll continue to work with our legal team and we'll continue to just work through these kinks. And when it falls into place, it'll fall into place. Can I space say something? Yep. Okay. I don't like doing anything without targets. Okay. Everybody has to have a target date. I don't like to leave it open-ended. I would like to say that we should revisit this on or about June 1st. And I don't, okay. want to leave, I don't like the idea of having a vendor sitting out there with no idea of what's going on and uncertainty. I'd rather talk, uh, rather say we can revisit this on or about June 1st. Shari can, Bowler can work through all the details associated with the purchase. We can work, we've already worked through all the details with regard to the design of the, the trolley, but not, but tell them basically we're going to get back to you on about June 1st and we're hoping and we can work to them to maybe get a delivery this September. But I think you need a target. You don't want to have an open-ended whenever. I think we, you know, we continue to work on it. We continue to go forward with the Friends of Beach Haven. Uh, I think we communicate back to the township. We're not going to run it this summer. Maybe we'll have something in the fall. We strategize about how we have drivers in the fall. But I think that's the best approach. But I want to have a date in mind as to say, okay, June 1st, we're going to make a decision as to whether we're going to order on June 1st or we're going to delay it further. 
Okay. Okay, I think that's good. Um, I'm going to just let Steve talk real quick and then we're gonna go back to the council, okay? Hold on. Steve Steiner, can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? And see you. Yes, yeah. you're up. <laughs> yes. Well, I turned Always, the camera. Steve. I, Always. I, I turned the camera feature on. Uh, <laughs> I, this is actually I'd never used Zoom before Monday, and this is my third Zoom amongst two other things that I've been doing online. It's been a very busy week full of meetings. Uh, with, yes. Uh, I had the center of non center for nonprofits earlier today. Uh, and tomorrow is Art Pride, so yet another one's coming. Uh, That's good. Yes. So anyway, well, uh, I think uh, Don uh, has a, a lot of uh, sense there in what he has to say. I, I think we want to be uh, with his wanting a target. If it's truly a four-month lead time, then you want your target to be May 15th. That's four months from September 15th. If you wait till June 15th and there's a four month lead time, then you're talking about October and when pretty much most of the uses, the full uses for the vehicle uh, would be finished. Uh, so I think you wanna take a look at a calendar and if you really wanna do it four months ahead, then you're talking about looking at it again on May 15th. And if for some reason you're not ready to go May 15th, then you look June 1st and then, then you look June 15th. But uh, if that four month lead time is true, then it's May, not June. Uh, and uh, I, I think whenever it's delivered, we, we make a big deal about it. Uh, and we, you know, just really let it, uh, let it bring Beach Haven into everybody's uh, immediate thought process whenever it's delivered. Uh, you know, that's one of the nice things about social media. You can do it at any time and people pick up stuff at any time. Uh, so uh, as much as I would like to forge forward and know that you get the 501c3, I formed one too, uh, uh, quickly, I still, uh, I, I, can, I can certainly uh, uh, go with Don's idea uh, and uh, at least in our own minds, what I don't think we want to set anything. I don't think the council wants to say we have to look at it at this date. I, I, and I agree with you about that, Sherry. But I think we as a committee uh, and and us as a council uh, want to at least have uh, a target in mind. That's all I got. Okay. All right. Thanks, Steve. I'm going to mute you. Fine. And uh, if, any, if any of the members of council have anything more to add, you can do that now. And then we're going to hand the meeting over to Shari Bowler. So go ahead if you have anything else to add. Could I ask a few questions? Go sure. Ahead. All right. Um, one question I'd like to know, the quote that we got on these trolleys, um, I didn't get a chance to get a word in when Don was on the horn. Does that quote have an expiration date on it? Uh, the other question I had was, you know, we were talking about this at the last meeting, um, it was kind of contingent, the, the risk factor for the town was kind of mitigated contingent on the commitments from the, uh, the businesses. So if the businesses are shaky, you know, we're going to buy this thing before we really know, you know, it was supposed to be a partnership. So now the town is going to buy this and hope for the best. Um, that's kind of not how I thought that this thing was going to go. Um, I'm still for it. I still want to see it happen, but I'd like to see it happen on a stronger foundation. Um, and that's why I ask if the quote has an expiration date, if it can, if we can push back until next year to get this thing going. Um, the other problem I, I, I have with mind. it is, what's that? I wouldn't mind having the donations collected, you know, these donations coming in all summer toward a kickoff for next summer. Then we know where the town stands as far as our commitment to it. Because right now, 
you know, we made this ordinance, this capital ordinance, based on the expectation that it was going to be a pretty solid partnership with the private sector, with the businesses. Now that's kind of mm -hmm. up in the air for this summer. So why not, you know, get that foundation set up is my, you know, my question. And then, you know, if we don't get this thing to September, I mean, we still haven't answered the question, where are we going to keep it? We still haven't, you know, as we all know, if you park a vehicle on the island, it rusts. You know, I don't want to buy $250,000 fare, you know, trolleys to potentially put them in a parking lot and let yeah. the salt and everything chew them up. So why not? I Wait. feel like that's the least, that's the least of our issues right now. I think we'll be no, able no. to solve that one fairly but easily. Another reason why we should let's figure this out first. Let's not rush this through this year. Yeah. Let's get the money. Let's get the legal. Let's get the plate. Let's get the logistics ironed out. Let's not um, worry about it. You know. Dan, the the co-op itself, the contract that it's under, that contract is in place until December thirty first, twenty twenty. So. We have plenty of time there. It may renew, but it may not. But at least uh, I would assume that the quote that we have in place then at that point would be valid until 1231. Sure, then we could jump on it. We could have them by April if it's a four month lead time. And that's great timing. Mm -hmm. Right. Spring break, you know. Okay, all the good anything else about this, about this topic? No? All right, Shari, I'm going to hand it over to you. Okay, um, did everybody receive the latest packets from this afternoon? They should have yes. been dropped off. Yes, why did we get two sets? Are, are they, I haven't had time to really analyze. Um, yesterday, I had dropped off to you um, just some worksheets that we usually utilize when we go through this presentation. Right. Um, Sherry and I, talked about them today and we made just a couple minor changes to them so I had them reprinted and then I included a few other spreadsheets that would help along for the conversation so um, they should have been dropped off about a couple hours ago and I got mine I got mine a couple minutes before the meeting <clears throat> right so um, okay um, to move this along, I think the best place would be to start, um, if you look at the worksheets, the one worksheet for salary and wage, I usually break it out. I have one uh, set of worksheets for all salary and wage, and then the other for other expenses. Right. If you take a look at the salary and wage, and we can I have two it. worksheets for salary and wage. Um, and if you one had the... The bottom right of the worksheet, it'll um, have a date stamp on it with today's date, March 26th. Oh, okay, got it, okay. I mean, they're pretty much the same with a couple of the percentages are a little different, okay. Correct, it. There's, it's very minor changes, but I wanted you to at least see the most update. Okay, great. Um, we can go through this line by line if you like, or we can just kind of, I could, you can look at the areas that I've highlighted. With salary and wage, Really, there is not a lot of uh, wiggle room here because all of these salaries are already approved uh, with union contracts or individual contracts. So there isn't really a whole lot of place here to negotiate or to review or to make changes. You mean we don't get to revisit the raise for the council? <laughs> Chuck of Lake, your sense of humor's back. <laughs> uh, so, Sherry, um, yep. can we just go through the highlighted ones then? Yes. So, I mean, really on the first page one, the, really the only change, the reason there was an increase in finance was because we had um, a new hire. Colleen at that point was converted from a part-time to a full-time. <coughs> um, on page two, we still our budgeting for, I just left it in there to highlight it. I'm just noting that we still have room to increase the hours in the construction office if we want to add some part-time hours in there. Um, the only, the biggest change really with salary and wage was on page three um, under the police department. This was a request um, from the chief, I think, to bring us more in line with um, 
current part-time hourly rates and what the state is doing with increasing minimum wage. So we did some analysis on our SLEOs and based on the number of officers, um, you know, times to buy what the hourly rates would be. And that's where we showed our biggest increase in dollar value. What is the hour, hourly rate? Um, I know Sherry, you had a discussion maybe with the chief on this. You might be able to explain this one best. I think he was at $15 an hour for our class twos, which are the higher ranks. And I think he was right 14 for the class ones, which is the lower rank. This is the increase in wage. This isn't, this is the, what was that would it be before? the increase, yes. Okay. Increase what were they to that getting, amount. I'm sorry, what? What are they getting for? What are they at now, 11 or so? Okay. I, I have no problems with I that. Think I think they're more at 11 or, or so now, maybe, minimum wage. I, okay. I mean, I think we have to make sure the, wage, the minimum wage is met and that these people have a, a decent wage for their... Um, also in the police department, we had one officer retire at the end of last year. So we have a vacancy slotted in there. So we saved a little bit of money there. Um, and that's really it. I added just a little bit of money in some of the public works line items for overtime because we changed some of the wording in their contracts that they um, aren't able to bank as many hours uh, that they used to. So just with some contractual changes, we are you know, anticipating maybe a little increase in payout. So just made a couple of minor increases there. So overall- In overtime, it would have to doubled. Um, it was in that one line item, if you're looking at page five and recycling, that was also because we were basing it off of actuals from last year. We actually had to transfer money into that line item in 2019. We spent okay. more than we budgeted last year for that. Sherry, the, the shift commander line item, that is one of the sergeants though, is it not? Or doesn't it have to be by law, I thought? That is when um, there is not a sergeant scheduled on duty and uh -huh. If you have two officers and they're both patrolmen, one of them, the higher ranking patrolman, uh, receives a shift commander pay for that uh, shift. Okay, I got it. I remember that. But you can see on your spreadsheet that we have four sergeants right now. So we run four, I'm sorry, three sergeants and we run four shifts. So, you know, if in at some point we promote someone to sergeant, then we have a sergeant for every shift and the shift commander pay would no longer apply. And we do have yeah. some money in the budget that we also budgeted last year in anticipation for another promotion to sergeant, but we haven't done it yet. So it's either one or the other. You're either got four sergeants to cover four shifts or you've got one shift where you've got somebody receiving shift commander pay. And you'll see on um, the bottom of page six at the end. The Sorry, can, I, can, we go back to, can I ask you a question? Sure. On, uh, just to clarify. So when we're looking at salary increases with the officers, the significant, I mean, for the officers, it's a $10,000 increase from in a year, which is a pretty significant amount. So what were you going by to increase or what was the chief going by to ask for a, a 10,000 increase in a yearly sal salary for the officer? What were you going by? Those are all based off of their contracts. The police department, they have a grid that they work off of and they're all on a step. So they get a, every year they move up a step and, and whatever's uh, negotiated in their contract, usually with that, uh, like a 2% raise. But that's, Sherry, that's Sherry, a $10,000. So they're, those are their contractual uh, salaries as per their negotiated uh, labor contract. 
ten thousand dollars a year. When is that contract end? Um, I think this current one expires in is it twenty twenty? I think it expires at the end of this year. So as so, just to clarify, as per their contract from nine from two thousand nineteen to two thousand twenty, the officers have a ten thousand dollar increase. Um, it's not quite. No, no, it's big. They are all. Step. They're all in different steps. The step is. Yeah, I, I see, you know, um, outline those. I think ten I, steps. You know, and every year is a different column. So that's wherever they are in that step, they move up a step every year. Okay. Thank after you. another year of service. Thank you. So it varies. I think the amount. And another thing, Jamie. I, I so, mean, because it does look like these salaries are pretty high. Um, I, I think what happened is. Um, uh, we we did some major rehauling of the police department when Jim Waite was here, and um, we actually started the police officers when they started at a, a much lower salary than what other other uh, police forces were getting or what they had been getting in the past, and uh, event, knowing that they would be moving up to these higher salaries, but we started them at lower salaries. So over the years, we have had a substantial savings in police our you know salaries um can, and we can thank jim white for that but uh yeah it does look like a lot but this is we we're still lower than most of the towns uh i know we're considerably lower than lbi and most of the towns in new jersey although new jersey's higher than most other states what they pay their police officers yeah and we lost police officers too yes uh, yes yeah. we're higher Ivanchik <laughs> was one, I know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ivanchik, he went over to Egg Harbor. Uh, he was offered so much more money by them. So we've had a hard time yeah. keeping police officers. We lost Pertel this year. And yep. yes, um, to explain that the step up happens on their, on their anniversary date. So every 12 months at, on their anniversary date, they take the step. Yeah, I, I, and that's I'm not aware. I understand this the is contracts and unions. And it's not <laughs> the, at the request of the chief. He doesn't have anything to do with their negotiation. It happens through their, their associations. Um, so overall, if you look at the bottom of page six, our salary and wage um, overall had a 2.36% increase with pretty standard because across the board really it was about a two percent raise for everybody so 2.36 percent increase overall with salary and wage okay that's great yes yep, including good the, job including the you know the increase with the Leo so um if you want to is everybody good with that worksheet or is there anything else you would like to discuss um, Sherry Mason, real quick, was there anything increased with the um, the lifeguards? Remember, we mentioned that previously about possibly looking into increasing different salaries to assist in getting more lifeguards and stuff like that. Yeah, I think that Sherry can confirm, but I think that we went, we took a look at all of our seasonal employees and tried to bring everybody up to that $15 an hour mark as much as we could. So yes, I think that's built into what you see here. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I mean, that was the only one question, right? That was the only line item today that, um, in looking at it again, we just questioned on maybe we should increase it just maybe a tiny bit more. Um, we did do some analysis, but we went pretty conservative um, we only increased the beach patrol um, by about just shot, you know, 20,000 or so, 17,000. And then we left the beach bat, the badge checker line item the same because um, they didn't utilize it all last year. We didn't charge it in full. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, we could do another analysis of it and maybe increase it a tiny bit, but uh, we did go pretty conservative there. Uh, Mike Lawrence, he's what? the captain 
of the Beach Patrol. Uh, Mike Lawrence. Is a very, hello. Yeah, Mike yeah. Lawrence, you said. Yeah. Page 607. Uh, I had heard some rumors last year or some discussion relative to he, he was hoping for an increase. Someone whispered that to me. Is there any contract oh, we have? Well, that's I don't think we can mention. Well, that. I don't really deal in rumors. I don't really deal in rumors, but um, yeah, so we do have conversations with the department heads, right. and we asked him directly if he was requesting any 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 increases. And um, so the him him as department head did not request any increases in his department. So um, what is presented is is what he he is requested as department head. Okay. Right, Sherry? Okay, so are we good with this salary and wage spreadsheet? I am. Okay. Um, if you want to move along to the other spreadsheet where that is titled the 2020 other expenses. Mm -hmm. Again, the other expenses for the most part um, stay pretty stagnant year to year. And we try not to change them if we don't need to. Um, so you'll see, we can go through kind of quickly and I will highlight the areas that we had really the most change in and, you know, discuss them if we need to. Um, on page two, there were not any really any changes on pages one or two. Um, page three, just a small increase, um, well, in tax sale costs. Um, our new tax collector this year had expressed some interest in maybe doing an electronic tax sale this year. So he had given us some estimates on fees that that might be required for that. So we kind of threw that in there in case he wants to do it. Um, special litigation, um, that's, we took a hit there last year and we had to transfer money in there. We originally budgeted 90,000 and we had to transfer 60,000 in. So we had charged against that 150,000. So I'm that, sorry, I lost you. Where, where are you? I'm on page three. Okay. That's where I was. So which line item were you on? Uh, special litigation. Okay, okay. Midway ahead. through, um, we went from 90000 to 150000 mm -hmm. So I left it because I, I don't know if that will be decreased this year. We're still kind of in the thick of some things. So um, that's yeah. what we spent this year, 150 right? Yes. We budgeted 90 and we spent 150 So you're right. keeping 150 for next year. Okay. Correct. Um, that, the location's gone through the roof. This right. year with things. Right. Yep. Um, <laughs> other than that, the only change really on the next page, page four, zoning services. Um, we have a shared service agreement for our zoning officer. So we just change that to make that appropriate. Um, the construction official uh, was required this year to change over his software. So that um, was a $9,600 purchase that we had to add to his line item. He did some legwork and, you know, he had to buy a new software. Did we lose Jamie? Yeah, I'm back. Mm -hmm. I had oh, you I just crapped out. I, I got was, her. I got back on my personal hotspot. Okay. Um, let's see. Moving on to the middle of page five. Insurance, um, that just had a small increase for health insurance, about 30,000. Um, last year, we actually had the real big decrease in our health insurance by about 300,000, I believe. Um, so luckily they kept the policies pretty much the same. So um, there wasn't a whole big change to insurance. Uh, let's see, page six. No real changes of anything important. We, we removed in emergency management last year, we budgeted for the purchase again of the emergency placards. We took that out since we already have them. So there was a small decrease there. On page seven, um, streets and roads. Last year we 
budgeted for them to buy a truck or we took that out. So we have a small decrease there. Okay. Um, let's see, no changes really on page eight, uh, except just the one area highlighted in buildings and grounds. Um, Chris, our public works superintendent requested that we put a little bit more money into just expenses for the building. We're starting to see some maintenance contracts uh, having to kick in for some equipment. Um, some of these contracts are pretty substantial for HVAC, elevator service, fire and security monitoring, fire system inspections, and the generator inspections and service. So they're all included in that increase. Sherry, I have a question on the placards. Um, I have not gotten my placards placard and it, it's I, I i think i talked to bill and they said it was supposed to come to bay village or something um is there a way i can track that down hold on a second Lost i'm gonna placards. unmute that's still in there this best has everyone else yeah, got she's here. <laughs> Yep, I got mine. <laughs> I'm sorry. There's Go ahead, Bev. Don't worry, we will take care of you. However, in the event that there is an event that <clears throat> requires the placards, you would get a higher level one than a, a local resident one. Uh, okay, I just thought they were coming here and I knew that you and Bill were the ones to talk to about it, so. Right, right. I'll, I'll touch base with you in an email. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, go ahead, Sharon. We are on page nine. Right. Um, there was a $5,000 increase this year for the uh, Tuckerton water taxi. So there was that increase in parks and playgrounds. Um, moving on to page 10, here is a question I have now. Um, at the top of page 10 for our shared service with Long Beach Township, I added in there 30,000 for the shared service for the trolley. So I'm not sure at this point what to do with that line item, Sherry? I also thought that t the township was going to ask for more than 20,000 for this coming year. No. No? Okay. No, we just approved the contract. Okay, good. Yeah, okay. we have 20,000 for their trolley system. Okay. Um, and then I added 30 for our shared service, so. Okay, so when I was at one of those mayor's meetings, they were talking about increasing that 20, that's where I got that. I would, I, Shari, feel that it's not something we would need to budget for in 2020. Okay. Um, okay, so then let's see, moving on and a little bit further down on page 10, um, we have under beach replenishment, we have added uh, 35,000 for the sand dredging expenses. And I believe those are things, uh, we've already added that to the temporary, that's already in motion. Um, the figure that's in there for the library that I have highlighted, the, the state puts out a figure um, every year, they tell us what we need to budget and what we budget on the appropriation side is directly offset with the same number on the revenue side. So there is no, you know, offsetting hit or miss on that one. Um, on page 11, under utilities, um, I added 5,000 for gasoline purposely for the trolley. Would you like me to remove that for now? I mean, yes. whatever, if we get the trolley in the fall, we could probably just absorb that. 
Yeah, I don't think it would be. Why don't we just leave it in there and we, if we don't spend it, we don't spend it, right? We could do just, that as well. You never know. Maybe gas prices will increase right now. Maybe they'll know. deep. Yeah. Well, we didn't exhaust. We didn't exhaust the gas line item last year, right? Right. Um, well, I'll tell you how close we came. If you want to give me one second. Um, gas. Yeah, we budgeted 80 and we, we had about 16,000 left over. So I can bring it back down to 80 if you want. Yeah, I think that's plenty. Okay. Will do. Um, Moving on on page 11, the highlighted areas are just the pension, which that is our bill for the pension from the state. And we had some uh, slight increase. Actually, our PFS, they went down, so. Um, page hmm. 12, the only really change is in our grant section, and those are um, items that we've either been awarded as a grant or we received last year after budget adoption and now we are appropriating them in this year's budget. And then the last page for the current account on page 13, um, the very top line item is the capital improvement fund. And for the past few years, we've been putting away 75,000 budgeting um, that amount. After Sandy, when we got the CDL loan, we actually started dumping a lot of money into our capital improvement fund. We were putting 200, 300,000 every year. We've backed it back down to 75,000, and that's the fund that we've been using over time to self-fund a lot of our projects. Um, last year alone we utilized 366,000 from the capital improvement fund. Um, we purchased a truck through there. We did some improvements or with the, with the trash truck, I believe, and more trash cans. Um, so the balance at the beginning of the year, what we brought that fund down to is we have 182,000 in there. So last year we set, we utilized 366,000. So we've been utilizing it to self fund projects with, which is great, but we're bringing it down, you know, to a lower amount. So I proposed at least for this year, bumping it up to 150,000. Um, I wouldn't, you know, we could go more if you want, but I would definitely recommend putting more than the the minimum what we've been doing for the past few years is 75,000. I mean, or we just don't have the ability really to self fund projects. We do need money in the capital improvement fund for all of our bond ordinances uh, to use as our 5% down payment. So that's the other thing. So I put- so Sharon, Would that bring the total in that account up to 330 something? It would bring it up to the... about 315. Okay. I think it's good. Good for now? I think so. Okay. Um, build it back up. Sherry, I also left the line item in there for the preliminary design of the um, police station. I think, did we just award that? We didn't utilize that last year, did we? Um, do we still, what do we, can you refresh one second, my memory here? We did receive a bill from Ron Sebring and Associates for that preliminary design that was just under 20. Okay. But it, would, see, it would be nice to have another allocation going forward to well, take the next step. So last year, at the end of the year, we had only charged against that um, 1600 So we have... We either have to appropriate more or this 20,000 is gonna to go towards the bill that we have from him. Yeah, did you get the bill? I, I don't know if we have it encumbered. I have to check. I mean, that's not something I'll have, I'm checking now. 
but are we going to be spending more? Yeah, I, what, I, what he I, build us. You know, I think it's time to appropriate a little more for that rather than. Yeah, I think Nancy, you agree that we should be moving forward to utilize that space. I do. I do. I, 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 I particularly as I talked to you about um, the, the township bought a motel to house people in that we could, that's the perfect building. It sits empty. Um, mm -hmm. And I do think we need to start thinking along that line. I mean, it's, we're, we're losing money just having an empty building. We could get it up to snuff and uh, we can certainly recruit people in the summer if they have housing. We lost our life mm -hmm. from barracks. This would be a nice alternative, but it needs some work. The twenty thousand is probably not going to do a whole lot, but at least no. we could work with okay. our we could work we could with work, our public we, works work department. So we get get started. Yeah. Um, Sherry, sorry, this twenty thousand is an additional twenty. We did, yeah, that bill is encumbered for eighteen thousand in two thousand nineteen. Okay. So this would be an additional twenty if you want to spend that or more. That's the question here. Um, I'm not quite sure what to estimate for that. I, w <sighs> I mean, that would be a capital project if we did go through. Right. If we do, I think this, this line item was, again, just for the preliminary design to get an estimate on exactly. and whatever we do, do with it moving forward would become a capital project funded through an ordinance. Exactly. So we did the preliminary design last year. I guess the reason I left it in there with a the highlight was to just ask the question, you know, now what? Are we done with the preliminary design or do we need more money to still determine what we're going to do? Well, I think, I still think us we need. Go ahead. Sorry. I still think we need more funds to determine what we're doing because the plan that he gave us. I felt was just over the top. We couldn't yeah, even, was. I, we couldn't imagine spending what he was suggesting. Um, right. So I would like to keep it in there so we can continue to do some research about what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll leave it in there. Thank you. Um, and then the next section highlighted on page 13 is debt service where this is where we'll end up getting into a further discussion anyway, but the first two line items are our principal and interest payment now that we have for our USDA loan, which is for the municipal building. The 1240 for our ban and capital notes, that's our principal pay down for our bond on anticipation notes. Um, we can talk about that in a moment. And then the other two line items are really non-negotiable. It's our interest payment is the 205,000 on what we have to pay in May for our notes. And then the $275,000 for our one fifth payment to repay back our CDL loan. Um, we have finally fully paid off our deferred charge for the revaluation, which we had budgeted for five years at 40,000. So that came off of this year's budget. Um, and so in total, with the way it stands now, and the only two corrections I have, we're going to reduce it by 35000 for the trolley expenses and the gas. Um, before that reduction, we have just a 3.6% increase over last year for operating expenses. Mm -hmm. Good. See that change so, a little. Um, are there any other questions on that worksheet? <sighs> and there's still more. So. <laughs> okay. Any questions or no? Nope. No. Still debating. Okay. Um, next, in your packet, um, if you look for this um, where it says revenues, 
and right. revenues. Yeah, let me find that. Mm -hmm. It's here somewhere. Basically, um, I'm sorry it printed on both sides of the paper, but um, we saved a little bit of paper that way. Um, I left all of the revenues the same from last year with the exception of one. We had a, a small shortfall um, in our on page, the third page, sheet four, in our zoning permits. Uh, we've appropriated 32000 for all the years I've been here. And this year we only collected 25000 So um, just something maybe you can look into. But in the meantime, we're only allowed to appropriate or raise as a revenue up to what we collected in the prior year. So that, you know, I put anticipated of 25,000 there for, for that. All the other revenues I left the same, including the surplus, which is still a topic of discussion, but for the meantime, mm -hmm. to see where we're at, right. I left it the same. On the last page, um, I have a highlighted amount for the local tax for municipal purposes. And that's really our, our plug number and where we get into our discussion now on how we're gonna balance the budget. Um, this was a new format this year that the state gave us as a spreadsheet to put the budget in. Usually I give you this document with a, a blank in that field. Mm -hmm. and. I tell you what our hole is that we need to fill, but the way the state, the way this document populates, it automatically put a number in there to balance the budget. So I highlighted it for you as now another topic we can discuss. If you look at, um, so here's where we get into our discussion on how do you wanna balance your budget? Um, the two areas really, We've gone through our appropriations, so they are what they are. We need to have our revenues match. The two areas really we usually utilize and we can fluctuate and work with is our surplus and real estate taxes. I'm going to, um, I can share my screen so now everybody can really see, but I also gave you one of the spreadsheets. Um, mm -hmm. Let me find it here. Can you guys see that spreadsheet? Yeah. On the screen? yeah. And you also have that printed out so you can look. Tom, it's the one we were talking about, that spreadsheet. Yeah. Okay. I'll try to explain it best I can. Um, basically, the top line is our 2019 baseline. Um, and based off of our net value taxable, and our tax rate and our tax levy last year, our tax levy, our municipal share is 0.373. Last year, if you recall, also we increased our surplus by quite a bit because we got more proactive in paying down our debt. So right. last year we paid more down to our debt and increased it with, an, uh, with Surplus. I have a few more spreadsheets all relating to this as well that we'll get into. Um, so to do some projections on what we can do, this line item right here that's highlighted, if you want to put a fixed dollar amount in to support the budget, the highlighted number here is our plug, is our whole right now. If we want to leave surplus the same as last year, what we would need to support the budget is this 8,261,000, which is a tax rate of 0.391, which is an increase of 1.8 cents over last year. Usually we use surplus, you know, and or taxes, like right. I said, balance our budget, and that's where we need to figure out the happy medium here. Um, so so we'd be using 2,753,211. That's the number we'd be using of surplus in addition to? That's what we used last year. Okay. Um, the other spreadsheet, if you want to take a look, you also have this in front of you. 
is, uh, let's see, where do I want to go? This spreadsheet here, which shows up at the top, really, I'm showing, you know, our trend in our debt, um, our, our net debt by year as a percentage. And then here you can see what, what's been going on with our debt service um, for the past 10 years, really, what our debt service I don't know if that's what we're seeing. I still see still the see levy. You, do, you don't see this? I see no. the, the tax levy calculation sheet. Are you looking? You're looking at the Sorry, one. hang on. Okay, you don't have it up on. on the screen, Shari. It's a. Uh, I, I see it differently. All right, hold on. Yeah, yeah it's a way. There you go. You see it? Debt per, okay. Annual debt okay. statement and then debt service budget appropriation. Do you that see this go. now? Yep, that's yes. better. Yeah, no. Okay. Except um, the top's cut. Well, it's not cut off that much. It's fine. Okay, well, you, all right, I, I thought you were looking at it. I moved it before. Right. There you go. Okay. So you can see over the past. Uh, seven, eight years, our trend and where our debt is going, our net debt based on the valuation averaged over three years. Right here is where we saw the relief of our $5 million loan uh, for this building. So our net debt did decrease from 2018 to 2019. Mm -hmm. You can see here um, what our for the past 10 years, what our appropriation has been in the budget for debt. Um, so that same thing, that's what I've been saying every year. It's the debt that's really been driving our budget. Um, based on our total budget, here's the percent of where we are with debt in our budget. Now this, mil uh, this figure I have here, the 1,579,000 is leaving everything as is last year that we just discussed and last year we went really proactive and we added another 200,000 to this amount um, over the prior year. So we increased it last year. If you wanna keep it at that accelerated pay down, that's where we're at. Um, and that gets us a 1.8 cent tax increase. If we well, not necessarily, that's, that's what we need to fill our budget, but we can utilize more surplus, surplus. you know? Um, yeah. If you want to decrease the debt pay down by a hundred thousand, you know that is going to help fill this hole a little bit. Um, and so here's where I'm showing the trend of what we've utilized in our budget every year for surplus and the percent. So you can see also last year because we had that increase in debt pay down, we utilized our own surplus to do so last year and kept the tax rate the same. Our tax rate has not changed now, I believe in three years. Um, so with that said, if you go back to the other spreadsheet we were just looking at. Right. Um, here are some ideas down here at the bottom where we can, you know, you pick a fixed tax rate. You don't have uh, that up on the screen yet, Sherry. It's we? not up again? No, we have the, you have the original one. I, oh, I thought you, you were going to the last page. I'm sorry. Not yet. I didn't get there okay. yet. Okay. Yeah, you have um, the original one. That's it. Also, I just wanted to point out these two line items that I added here. The state also puts a limit on how much you can raise taxes for. Um, so I've done all the calculations for the levy cap workbook and without utilizing, this may get a little confusing, but they allow you to also utilize some banks that you've kept in place maybe in a prior year by not raising taxes. They allow you to bank it, the money that you didn't use. Um, without utilizing any of our prior year banks, they cap our max levy that we can go to is right here at this 0.392. Yeah. So we're right. kind of at that limit where we're, we're pushing it to that limit. But we do have actually about 
I'd say 480,000 in a bank that we could use if we wanted. So the max that we could go, full blown max would be right here, but we don't need to go that high. So that's good. We're not pushing our limits yet. We don't have to go to the max. The state, we're still within our confines and within all of our cap calculations. So that's a good thing. I just wanted to point that out and I always show that. Right, that here. is good. So the I have a question. I'm sorry, what was that? I have a question. Okay. In your opinion, is is the the debt pay down still urgent? I mean, do you still feel like there's concern years ahead of us or, you know, could we ease off on the accelerated pay down and still be okay to make some of these payoff deadlines? I mean, I personally think the accelerated payoff is a good thing. We still have seven million in notes. Um, you know, seven, eight years ago, we had three million in notes. It's just the nature of where we are right now. Um, we're paying off 1.2 million as a principal. And what we authorized in debt last year with our bond ordinance, I believe it was a, just under 800,000. So with that said, what, what does that mean? We paid off 400,000 more than we took on. So as we're paying off this 1.2 million, mm -hmm. the money that we've added to our debt via bond ordinances, you have to compare that. So mm -hmm. we paid off 400,000 more, which is great, but we still do have 7 million in notes. So if we did shave that back down and took away the 200,000, we could, but you know, it's all gonna be relative to what we appropriate in an ordinance for 2020. Mm -hmm. And keep in mind with the trolley, our allowable debt authorized for the trolley, we're already at, you know, 316,000. So that's gonna come into play when we discuss our 2020 bond ordinance and, and how much we're able to appropriate. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. It does. Okay. So if you look here, if we wanna keep the same tax rate as last year with no increase, the way to balance our budget would be to utilize another 379,000 in surplus. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Uh, Tom, if, to keep the budget, to keep, if we kept our tax the same this year, the municipal tax, we'd have to utilize another 300,000 approximately of our budget. Surplus. Of our surplus, excuse me. Of the surplus, right? Yeah, yeah, we'd have to utilize another 300,000 of the surplus. So, you know, we could, if we wanted to, increase by half a cent, um, we would have to use another 273,000 in surplus. Um, keep in mind, we did decrease the budget by 35,000. So these numbers over here of what we would be taking from surplus would actually be 35 or so less. So, um, you know, if we, if we increase taxes by one cent, you know, we would use 168,000 extra in surplus. For every, what the value of a penny is um, for us on our tax rate is it's 211,000. So you say knock off 200,000 in uh, bond anticipation, principal note payment, and there's a penny saved right there. That's the value of a penny, $211,000. Right. Um, on this, uh, there's not a second page for that one. Okay, so if you look then, what does that mean for the homeowner? Okay, I'm not, I wouldn't suggest at this day and age, you know, footing the entire bill to balance the budget with just real estate taxes. I think we should do our share and contribute obviously, you know, with our surplus um, if you look at the other spreadsheet that I've given you, what does this mean for the average homeowner? Right. So 
there's our baseline. Here's our 2019 tax rate, 0.373. The average assessed home is 833,628. So that is your 2019 tax bill for just the municipal share only. Remember, we are about a third of the total. So of our 0.373, the total tax rate is 1.09. We are about a third for our share. Um, so here's what your increases are gonna show. For a half a cent increase, you're looking at a $41 increase for the average homeowner, average assessed home. and so forth. A penny, if we increase by a penny, your average home would show an increase of $83. Mm -hmm. And how much, is that using surplus? That is where you would go back to the uh, legal size sheet, this sheet that I gave you, yep. and you could yep. balance that, you know, here's where we, this column, here would show the half a cent increase in your tax, and we would be utilizing another 273,000 in our surplus. Okay, I see it. So right now the budget has 2.7 million in surplus, and you know that would be the increase of what we would be using to support the budget with a half a cent tax increase. That makes sense. So you'd be at 2.9, about 2.9 million in surplus to raise a half cent. Um, right, two seven plus two seven. It's actually, I think, probably what a little over three million. It'd be about three million, right here, three million twenty-seven thousand. And how much? The how much are we generating? How much are we able to generate back into our surplus annually? Will we replenish ourselves? Last year, we regenerated 3.5 million. Yeah. If, if, we, if we kept the tax rate exactly the same, uh, what, would our, what would we have to take out of the surplus again? I'm sorry. Right here, no problem. Um, about another... 380,000, so it would, we would be utilizing about 3.1 million right here in surplus. Okay. And that's doable. Yeah, it is. I, I mean, I, I, you know, I am concerned because of the coronavirus. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I am concerned with the economy. I mean, I'm not, I'm not really concerned about dying so much, but I, I'm more concerned about the economy. Um, and I, you know, the unknown of it, I mean, even right now, um, even right now, a lot of businesses that operate during the shoulder season are losing money. Uh, obviously any retail business that isn't a food, some places are making money, the liquor stores and the grocery stores are probably increasing their revenues, but an awful lot aren't. And I, I I hate the idea, I mean, of raising the taxes in this year with the uncertainty. Um, I mean, it's not a lot of money. Um, it's less than a meal out. But uh, on the other hand, uh, I, I don't, I'm hoping not to win, that we will have a good summer, but we might not. And, uh, and, and we, even if we have a good summer, I think we might have some difficulties in the fall. Um, so I, that, that, that concerns me uh, a little bit. Um, so if we, if we kept the taxes, the municipal tax, because we don't know what the school taxes are gonna do or what the county taxes are gonna do. Right. And, and I mean, there is the possibility of getting some federal and state money into the town. That, that's a possibility being that this is an emergency, um, but whether, whether that's going to um, uh, rescue that many people, it's, we're not sure. Um, 
so much depends on what the government decides. But um, so, so again, Shari, if we kept the taxes exact, our municipal taxes exactly as they are now, all right, and mm -hmm. we took the money out of the surplus to pay that, and we, would you still be generating some money into the surplus next year? And we actually increased the surplus, even with taking money out of the surplus last year. How would that shake out right now if we kept the taxes the same? We, I mean, we generated, you know, a little more than that last year. So right. you would be fine to do that. I mean, like us, I would say the only risk we would have, obviously every year you want to at least generate as much as and hopefully more than what you anticipate in your budget as a revenue right you know again with the uncertainty i'm sure and i'm hopeful that we still will have a, a great season i you know the only risk i would see for us is if you know people get scared and they don't come down and we lose revenue in beach badge sales or something of that nature and that's really where we generate a lot of our um excess right um that and just unspent budget appropriations is the other way we generate surplus. Um, so, I mean, can we absorb 3.1 million? Sure, we can, you know. Mm -hmm. But the, uh, the, we also have uncollected taxes, but those have been flat for the last couple of years, right? I mean, we haven't had any real significant loss of tax revenue from uncollected taxes? We have um, a 98.6% tax rate, I believe. Uh-huh. Give or take a little bit, so. We're so lucky in that that's respect. That's pretty solid. Yeah. Although, I, you know, I have been getting some emails from people asking about tax relief uh, because of Sandy, or because, it's, <laughs> because of Corona, and um, basically, uh, uh, I, there could be, uh, there could be, uh, uh, some difficulty for some people, uh, that, that cannot work. I think the majority of people though will be okay. And I think we can discuss that at another time, but yeah. I don't recall doing any tax relief when Sandy hit. So that'll be a discussion for another day. Yeah. I know we do have, yeah. Sherry, I mean, you're aware, I know we do have some tax appeals that are pending that I think, um, you know, are probably more than we've ever experienced, but in some conversations with the assessor, I know he's working hard on minimizing that loss. Mm -hmm. So, Dan, what are your thoughts on the, um, the proposed Jerry? amount? Is that Tom? You want? I got a couple of questions I want to ask. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. I, look, I'm going to go back to the very basic, what we need and what we don't need. Our our bill for 2020 is going to be what? Eight million, two hundred and sixty-one thousand four thirty-six. Are you talking That's, about the what? tax levy? The budget. So what we need to run the operation for this year, 2020. Our total budget. Yeah. Our total budget as it stands right now is 13 million. Okay, so 13 million, okay. And how much are we collecting or how much money are we going to be able to use? I'm probably not phrasing that correctly, but I'm trying to figure out what's gonna be revenue and everything else that we're going to have as a bottom. I'm looking for a shortage here. We, yeah, we already went over this. You have um, in the packet I, that I sent I to you. Pieces of it. I didn't get it all. <laughs> well, in the um, you have the the first packet where it starts with sheet four, which are the revenue sheets of the budget. Um, sheets right. four through eleven outline all the revenues. And what is that bottom line? Well, all of the revenues will have to total the thirteen million to balance the budget. Um, Okay, but it's not it's not going to do that. Am I correct? I'm I'm sorry. What? He said it's not going to do that. Is he correct? There, we're not. We don't have enough money between 
the taxes as they exist right now and the revenues coming in to meet our expenses for next year. Yeah. Well, well, when That's you put totally. the expenses in and you put the revenues in, correct, the, the, sh the where you right. need to balance it is with your surplus and your tax levy. And those are the two numbers that you have to figure out. You either, you know, you increase one or the other or a combination of both to balance the budget. But we're looking at right now, if we, according to this spreadsheet here, if you have a 7.8 million tax levy, then to balance it, you're going to use 3.1 million in surplus. If you one generate 7.9 million in taxes with a half a penny increase, then you're, you would balance it with 3,027,000 in surplus. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question? Uh, all right, if we take the, let's just say we take the 3 million one out, how much is that gonna leave us in surplus? The 3 million and one is the surplus that we're proposing to utilize to anticipate in the budget. I mean, every year we use some of the surplus. So you're using the 3.1. I understand that. How much is that going to leave us in surplus? Um, in cash surplus, about 3 million. And okay. we'll regenerate it as well. Correct. How much will that regenerate each year? It, it varies. Last year we regenerated 3.5 million. Okay. Any I mean, other, I, I, yeah, go ahead. Any other member of council have questions for Shari? Let's move, move along here. No, nope, I'm, I still favor using surplus versus raising taxes. Okay. Got it. Dan. If, uh, if we can regenerate more than we're using in surplus, and still have enough that you know our, our CFO is comfortable with in case of emergency. I'm fine with this. I mean, if Sherry's okay with the state of the budget, you know, after the fact, the state of the surplus of anything that may uh, may um, unanticipated, because this situation we're all in now sure was unanticipated. You know, then then I'm okay with leaving things as is and using more surplus, especially mm -hmm. since we can regenerate it. We can only estimate what our surplus will be after this year based on what we generated last year. I mean, oh, I understand. that's the best we can do. So in last year, we generated 3.5. Jamie, what are your thoughts? I'd like to keep the same uh, tax rate and use the surplus. Okay, I think that's what Shari needed to hear from all of you, what direction you wanted to go in so she could finally plug in the last few numbers that she needs to get this budget packet ready for introduction at the April 13th meeting. Is that right, Shari? Yeah, um, they, uh, they did push back the deadline to introduce to the end of April or you know the next scheduled meeting after. But at, at this point, I think we're ready to introduce and I'd like to still introduce at the April meeting. I think that's great. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, at this point, I just want real quick the council to give me the approval on the bill list. We sent out a bill list for $128,608.44. If we could get that approved and then we can start with some public comment. I've had a chance to review the bill list and I would like to make a motion to approve. Thanks, Chuck. Yes. I'll second. Thanks, Dan. Mr. Yep. Allen. Yes. Mrs. Bob Miller. Yes. Mr. Lynch. Yes. Mr. Maskell. Yes. Mayor Davis. Yes. Okay, if there's any member of the public that would like to speak, if you could raise your hand on your uh, toolbar, that would be great. Um, I think I know Mr. Harvey, you wanna speak, so I'm gonna start with you, okay? put you up here hey sherry can we have our screens back yeah sure i was uh, i can stop sharing thank you okay perfect 
That's good. Yeah, Sherry, I, I did. I have a Mr. question. Mr. Harvey, are you on? I'm here. I'm mm -hmm. unmuted. Yes. Uh, hey, Sherry, thanks. Great work. Um, my question was, it seems like the last couple of years when we look at this balancing the budget, we look at it year to year. Has there been any forecasting that has been done going out three or four years to determine, you know, and, and again, finance is not my strength, but do we hit a wall at some point? Um, I, I think uh, really what we've been doing is forecasting back. So we've been looking at the trends. Um, for what we've been doing over the past 10 years. And you can see, I mean, we have stayed pretty consistent. I mean, even though our, um, on the one sheet that I did with the, the where I showed the debt service, you know. Yes, or two, 2000. I mean, it shows that we're still on a steady trend. I mean, but as our debt is rising at the same time, so is our surplus. So we're, 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 trending upscale on both sides you know it's not like our debt is increasing and our surplus is decreasing and we're going into a red zone um you know after sandy it just it is what it is and we had to spend a lot of money to rebuild every one of our buildings so we have took on some more debt but with a lot of the strategies that we put in place at that time to protect ourselves um at the same time our surplus has been steadily Con consistent and you know at the same rise at least in proportion to how our debt is rising. Got it. Thanks. Thank you. Are there any? Oh, I mean, yeah, we do always project forward, but it's best to just look at what we've done in the past and what we're doing in the past is is working for us, so we're continuing on the same path. Yeah, and I'm thinking more like if you look into the future and did a scenario plan, what if you did have another Sandy-like event, would there be, rather than having to figure it out in a moment, could you anticipate those things happening and what you would do in those cases? What we would do in those cases if that happened? Um, yeah, we've put some things into motion. We, in the past few years, we have uh, set up a few reserves. Got it. Um, for a couple different things that the state allows us to. So, you know, these are all things put in place under the guidance of what the state, you know, gives us to, which one of the things we started two years back was a reserve for storm expenses. And we're, we build that up each year with a budget appropriation and we have a little bit of money and that's actually what we're using right now to charge against. They've state put out some, a local finance notice that we're allowed to use that plus reserve, even though it's called storm. Um, for expenses right now for this emergency. So we're fortunate right now that what we're purchasing and charging, we are not tapping into our budget at the moment. Okay, um, I don't see any other members of the public with their hand raised and, and that's not because they don't wanna speak, maybe because they don't know how to raise their hand. So. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to unmute everybody, which is kind of <laughs> scary, but I'm going to unmute everybody. And if there's a member of the public that would like to speak, um, please speak up and we'll try to, we'll try to get our way through this. Okay, hold on. Uh-oh, wait a minute. Scary. It's like opening the floodgates, right? It's still happening and they just said they unmuted us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I see everybody's microphones turning okay. on here. Let's talk later. I, uh, uh, is there any member of the public um, that would like to speak at this what? moment? Yeah, you should work. China and others. Is there any member of the public that would like to speak right now? That was okay. That's a no. Remember, if your phones are off of mute, we can hear everything in the background of you. You know? <laughs> All right. So we're going to go back. All right. Give me just a second. I'm going to put all the main players back on the horn here. Jamie. 
Dan, are you able to unmute yourself? <laughs> yep. Let me just get all the members of council back up here. I apologize, guys. I'm new at this. All right. Do I have everybody? I've got me, Shari, Dan. Chucky. <laughs> yes, I hear you. I'm sorry, guys. I'm just trying to mute everyone I need muted and get everybody on that I need here. Dan. Okay, so I think I got all members of council. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. All right. Um, are there any final remarks from council? Good job, everybody. I'm so proud that we got through that. Yes, I have comments. Uh, Go for uh, it. Yes, I'd like to once again thank Sherry Bowler for, you know, the excellent work that she does and uh, contributes to our understanding of the budgeting process. And, um, you know, congratulations to Sherry and to the Zoom crew. Thank you, Chuck. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Anybody else, final remarks? I'll make a final remark. Um, I, I wanna thank you, Sherry, for doing such a great job with Zoom. I'm a big enthusiast, enthousi I'm very enthusiastic about Zoom. And um, I think we keep getting better and better on it. Um, I just have a question, are you doing this from your office? Uh, I am at home. Sherry Bowler's at the office. Okay. It, it's interesting because, uh, I mean, your internet connection isn't as fast as some of the others, at least on my screen. So there's a lag time when you talk um, versus um, the rest of the crew, uh, which is it's interesting. Beverly, uh, your voice comes over strong. It's just your mouth isn't going with your voice. If that makes any sense. Like a, but, it's um, like a Chinese, yeah. like a Kung yeah, Fu. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so... It, um, yeah, Beverly suggested that I use my cellular hotspot next time to make it faster. So I'll try that next time. Okay. Yeah, it, it really works well. And I think we'll keep getting better and better with it. And um, I'm very enthusiastic. It's a lot easier being a participant than it is running being a host. And I thank Sherry for being a host. And I, I just want to say that I really think we're going to get through this and be okay. And um, just stay safe and uh, you know, try to lead a, get some stuff done while you're in quarantine that you normally don't have a chance to do. So uh, it's not the worst thing. Thanks, Jamie. I just have one. Hello, Tom Lynch. Okay, Tom. Uh, uh, I want to thank everybody for participating. I unfortunately could not fully participate uh, because of other reasons. Um, but I did want to thank everybody. I want everybody to be safe. If anybody needs anything, please give me a call. I will come over. I will help any way I can. But I want to extend my services. Whether it's running to the store for you or doing something that you might need to be done, I am glad to help you. I'm within a 10-minute ride of anybody locally. So that means I'm there to help you out. So please give me a call. Feel free. And I will help as much as possible. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Thank Jamie? Um, I just want to echo what uh, the other council members have said. And uh, thank you, Sherry Mason, for conducting the meeting and Sherry Bowler for giving us such sound advice moving forward with the budget. Um, in these past two weeks, I've become a virtual teacher, a uh, homeschool mom, which many of us have been. And it's been very difficult, but I can't imagine how difficult it's been for our emergency responders, our emergency management team who have taken on additional risks and also additional hours. So I just wanted to thank you truly for the volunteers out there in Beach Haven, for the people that are continuing keeping the borough moving forward. And, you know, I just want to say thank you for, for everything uh, moving forward. Here, here. You're welcome. Dan? Uh, yeah, I'd like to, you know, reiterate what everybody said you know i think you know everyone's just got to be a little bit extra careful in these times and to thank 
all our emergency, you know, first responders and let's see how we can support them. That way, if the time comes, they have to be there for us, they still can be. Um, we'll see, uh, hopefully everybody stays home and pays attention and washes their hands and, you know, we'll see you next time. <laughs> Very good, guys. Thank you very much. And do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you.